open in prayer. Father, open our hearts and our minds. Help us to understand your word and apply it in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before I start, I'm really, really apologetic. I have a confession to make. Um, There was a spirit of greed came upon me, and as I went out to prepare before the service, there were all these cakes that I could bump into, and there was um, some croissants, and the croissant had a little name on it, and I thought it said Tim, and I couldn't, I couldn't resist it. It spoke to me, and um, I'm afraid there's one short. I'm not afraid, but there is one short. I might be afraid later. <laughs> If Tina doesn't forgive me. And I thought I'd just mention that because also what I'm talking about today is the spirit world. If as spirit beings we don't understand anything in the spirit realm, we are never going to be very effective in what we do. And scripture tells us that in the beginning, God said... And if you read through chapter 1 of Genesis, it says, God said, God said, God said, God said, God said. And then he saw. And he saw what he said. God speaks things into existence. That's how God creates. And if we don't speak things into existence, we don't create. We copy But when we start speaking, and not just anything, we start to speak God's word. John 1.1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. When you're speaking God's word, it is powerful. Just think for a moment, the centurion, you know, and he came to Jesus and wanted healing for his servant. He just said, speak the word. He didn't say, go and lay hands on him. He didn't say, he didn't say, go and do such and such. He just said one thing. He said, speak the word of God, because you are the word of God. Just speak your word. And I know that my servant will be healed. No need for you to come. I'm a man under authority. I know what authority is. Just speak the word. And that's what God, I believe, is saying to us today. Just speak the word. And you will change situations. Now, we live in a physical world. And many people spend most of their time fighting and striving in the physical realm. But the battle is never won in the physical realm. It's always won in the spiritual realm. We need to become and battle spiritually. So how does the spiritual realm work? The spiritual realm creates physical So God is invisible. God is a spirit, it says in the Bible, and it says God is love. So God is a loving, totally loving, encompassing spirit, okay? The only way you can connect with God is through your spirit. You can't get to him physically, okay? As you connect with God spiritually, from spirit to spirit, Holy Spirit to your spirit, into your body, and then the manifestation will take place of the pattern, if you like, of the Holy Spirit. So what about other types of spirits? Well, let's have a look at Matthew 12, 43 to 45. It says, when an an impure spirit comes out of a person, It goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. 
Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. This is how it will be with this wicked generation. So just a little point here. It says it will take a more wicked spirit than itself. So there must be, therefore, levels of wickedness in the spirit realm of, if you like, Satan's demonic. You could also say wickedness breeds wickedness because they will go and get more wicked spirits once they've found a host. Now, mankind has a spirit that is originally was flawed. It's not perfect. And what it tends to do is it wants to be independent of God. And as a habit, especially when it gets into the demonic, demonic realm, to call things that are good, bad. And call things that are bad, good. And you can, only, you can see that happening in America very much with the grand master of this is Trump, where he calls things that are bad, good, and good, bad. Having come out of court, being convicted of felony, the first thing he said was, I'm an innocent man. After a jury has just, of 12, convicted him. He calls things that are good, bad, and bad, good. Is he a good leader? He's got remarkable leadership skills. Remarkable deception skills. And the interesting thing is the people of America feel well, you need a tough president. You need a worldly president to deal with worldly things. You need a, a slightly corrupt president, a slightly wicked president to deal with the greater wickedness in the world. And you, you can look at the regimes in the world, and they're not all the same, and there are some regimes that are literally very wicked. Okay? So the, here we see again levels of wickedness within the world. So all that Trump has done is he lived to benefit himself, and what people are seeing is well, now I live to benefit myself and America. And so it is, he's just extended America as part of himself. And we think, oh, that doesn't really matter. But whatever happens in America impacts the UK. And right now, there are elections taking place. And it's really important that we take our place in those elections. in the spirit realm. Because if you don't like people leading you who are corrupt or wicked, you, you need to pray that the right candidates right now in the UK are being put forward so that we can vote for them. Whether you vote whatever party you, you choose to vote for, it's not so much the policies you're voting for, it's the character of the person, and we need to get the right character of people in government. People who will stand for the truth and are not afraid to be aggressive with the truth and attack evil where it exists and attack wickedness and lies and deceit and expose it. But we have to do it in the spirit realm first. Ephesians 6.12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And that's the spiritual realm they're talking about. Our battle first is in the spiritual realm. 
if you've got the Holy Spirit in you, which you have, you can overcome every obstacle, every spirit that comes against you if you neutralize that spirit in the spiritual realm first, it's not going to be a problem in the physical realm. Jesus was accused of casting out demons because he was more wicked than the demons he was casting out. Same sort of argument we're putting for Trump. Aren't we? We're kind of American people are saying he's wicked, but he's dealing with very wicked people, so we need a wicked leader. Okay. Matthew 12, 25. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? Wickedness does not drive out wickedness. It just becomes more wicked. If you get a forceful leader, he will become a dictator very easily. You need the personal truth and integrity to fight wickedness. And you fight it first in the spiritual realm and then in the physical realm. So how do you fight in the spiritual realm? Well, you have a couple of things, like we did with communion. The blood, there's the cross and the blood. There's the Holy Spirit. And there is the righteousness, and most importantly, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we take a, 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 a blank human being, just being born, growing up, what is operating behind that human being will eventually form a pattern within this human being. Okay? If it's the Holy Spirit, you're going to see that person slowly transforming into a kind, loving, gentle, truthful, powerful, strong person of integrity, of honesty, of goodness. Because that is what's behind the person, the Holy Spirit. But there are counterfeiters who will come along. It can even be ministers that are counterfeiters. And we have to be on our guard against those who will again will call what is good, bad and what is bad, good. And without the Holy Spirit, and this is what I believe the spirit of the UK in particular is, I don't really want religion, so therefore I don't want anything to do with religion at all, any religion. I want to be independent. I want to be my own person. And what they're saying is, I don't need God. I want to be God. Because I want to own myself and be myself. And of course, if you try and find yourself, you never will. But if you lose yourself for the sake of the gospel, you'll find yourself every time. You'll find yourself in Christ. You won't find yourself out there in the world. It's just temporary transformation that doesn't last. Like a diet that you try for a while and then give up. There's no real substance to anything in the world. And you can see the spirits manifesting in people behind them. And the devil is trying to impose his authority everywhere. And if you don't have God as your source, then you're open to deception. You're opening yourself up to be pulled this way and that way. And you have the moral consensus, which is saying it's okay. 
One minute it says this, the next minute it's like butter. It's not good for you. Now they're saying it's good for you. Or later on they'll say butter's not good for you. This is good for you. It's always changing. It's not based on anything of substance. And this kind of spirit is a prideful spirit. And if you ever try and correct somebody who's full of pride, you'll discover what that spirit is. It doesn't want to be corrected. You will see that spirit manifest straight through. But the Holy Spirit is all-powerful, all-knowing. And he gives you kindness, he gives you joy, he gives you peace. This is the stuff we want. The Holy Spirit is shaping you into his pattern, into his dimension, into his kingdom, which is colossal. Satan is a counterfeit. He's trying to shape you into his kingdom, into his pattern. But... And then this dealing with spirits. How do we deal with some of these spirits that are around people? You see, if we try and wrestle in the physical, in arguments, in debates, in conversations, you're wasting your time. Because there's a spirit behind the person. First, you bind the strong man. You bind the spirit operating behind the person. Behind the government. Then... You free that person to make their own choices and who would turn away the love of God? No one. What turns away the love of God are wicked spirits, demonic powers. So we must come against the demonic in the spiritual realm and then we can overcome and win in the physical realm. But nothing will happen until you start off in the spiritual realm. Okay, well, I've heard lots of stories that, you know, depending on the demon in somebody, it can be really difficult to get rid of. There is one God. And there is one name that's been exalted to the highest place. Philippines 2, 9 to 10. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave them the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So if a king says to his servant, go and fetch me a shirt, what do you think the servant will do? Go and fetch him a shirt. Obvious. If the king goes to the prince and says, fetch me a shirt, what will the prince do? He will go and fetch the king a shirt, exactly as the servant. Why? Because of the authority of the king. Okay? You all have the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter what demon or level of demon, demonic activity you're against, it's the same authority that will win. It's not, oh, I've only got this much authority. You've got the authority of the name above every name. And every demonic activity has to respond. You don't debate and have conversations with spirits, you'll never get anywhere. They'll just get into religion, where, you know, that's where the devil wants to push you. Religious Christians, absolutely powerless. But if we stay in the spiritual domain and bind those spirits, stop them acting, see the spirit behind the person, bind it, and then love them, it'll change things. You see, Paul encourages Timothy to pray for people in authority. You see, we do need to pray. If we don't like the government, guess whose fault it is? Ours. Because we never prayed for the government. We never prayed for the local elections. We never pray, prayed for those who are in authority and power. Those in companies. 
Pray for honesty, integrity. Christians marched through London several years back and prayed. And the result was a year later, massive amounts of corruption in the banking world was exposed. You see, when we take our authority, things happen. The truth, or should I say wickedness, gets exposed. We remove, we neutralize the spirit that's pulling the puppet strings and the light shines in. So it may sound a little wacky, but we are spiritual beings. And what, if we start speaking the word of God on our mouth, as led by the Holy Spirit, you are going to impact the spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm manifests in the physical realm. So when you operate in the spiritual, you're affecting the, the physical. Okay, you with me? Amen. So 1 Timothy 2, uh, 1 to 2 says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for some people. No, it doesn't all people. We should be interceding for all people, praying for all people. Who are all people? People we meet. Governments. It say goes on to say for kings and for all those in authority. Why? That we may live a peaceful, quiet lives in the goodness and holiness. You see, it's really difficult if we want to do an outreach ministry in Ukraine right now. It really is difficult. And the closer we get to the front line, the harder it becomes in the physical realm. Because there's a war that is raging, not only in the spiritual, but it's manifested into the physical. And we have to be aware of this war. You see, it's not about having a strong leader. It's about having a strong leader with integrity. Without the integrity and character, you have nothing. We want a righteous leader. We should be praying for righteous uh, leaders. I mean, I, I kind of think we're not really praying as Christians globally, or should I say United Kingdom and Commonwealth-wise, enough for our king and the princess of Wales. Because they've both been attacked by sickness. And we should be praying and standing for them. You see, they, haven't, they have a calling of service. And they're serving and they're relying on our protection to cover them in prayer and bathe their, them in prayer and intercession so that they can remain strong and do good. And the royal family does a lot of good, a lot of good. So the only solution in life is to develop a, a trust and a dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said in, in communion, depend on his righteousness, depend on his authority. You have authority. Whether you like it or not, you're a person of authority because you're right with God. And God's just waiting for you to speak the words of authority. So another peculiarity, or not so pe peculiarity, is that in God's world, there's an order. Jesus Christ, if you like, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at the head, the headship. And then we have archangels, and we have angels. And then we have man, who's a little lower than the angels, all the way down. And there are levels of authority. Satan is a copier and a counterfeiter. He has levels of wickedness and powers of, of authority. And in nations, you will see different spirits operating. Spirits tend to be territorial. They like to come back to the same area. When, when there's a car accident, people kind of got the, the right idea where someone's killed, you go and put flowers there. Why do they do that? Why do you take something that's alive, kill it by cutting it into, into a bunch of flowers, and then you put it down where someone died. 
It's kind of trying to make something beautiful and put it where something was dark. That's what they're trying to do. But we can go there and take authority over the spirit operating in that place, command it to cease, and guess what? It has to, because you've got the authority. And you've got to understand and believe that you have that authority in Jesus Christ. But I, I really don't feel like I'm, I'm that kind of bold. Yes, you are. Just, you trust God, you believe you're going to heaven, now start exercising that authority. You see, authority will have victory over every kind of sickness or demonic activity. And many demonic activities manifest in the form of sicknesses within people. And most people who aren't Christian will try and fight these illnesses, sicknesses in the flesh. But it starts in the spirit. Ephesians 6.12 again, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we take authority in the heavenly realms. That's our first thing that we must do. If you're going to talk to someone about Jesus, take authority in the spiritual realm first. And then they'll be ready to listen. But if you don't, there's a devil or a demonic with their hands over their ears, stopping it all go in. You can be bold because of the blood of Jesus, that his blood was shed for your forgiveness, so you can be at one with the Holy Spirit. You see, you've got to put faith not in your works. Like if I said to you, I spent all last night on my knees praying about this message, you'll be all so impressed. But God wouldn't be. And it really would make little difference, okay? Not really. Because it's not about works. It's about God is far more impressed that I'm standing up here trusting in him to speak through me and working with the Holy Spirit on the word of God and speaking the word of God with boldness and authority as I want you all to do. That impresses God. That impressed the Saint Jesus with the centurion that he trusted in Jesus' authority that if he said the word, it would be done. If you want to impress God, speak the word boldly, speak in the heavenlies, and then the heavenlies will then manifest in the physical realm, just like how God created the world. So you've got to have an expectancy that when you speak these words, these things are happening in the spiritual realm. And you've also got to know that no spirit can resist that. Well, this is a tough spirit. There's no tough spirits out there because however tough they might be, they're up against the Holy Spirit. And what you're saying is this one is nearly as tough as the Holy Spirit. I don't think so. I really don't think so. No spirit is, can match the Holy Spirit. He's all-powerful, all-knowing. It's Jesus in you that gives us that power and authority. Our motive for all of this is that wonderful word, love. We can do nothing without the love of God. So in the physical realm, we apply our authority. In the, sorry, in a spiritual realm, we apply authority. We command. Now, some Christians start commanding in the physical realm. That's not what the word says. This is what we're to do in the physical realm. Romans 12, 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So what do we do? We do good. Those that hurt you, we bless, we love. Those that rub from you, steal from you, we love. 
but we bind the spirit behind them. And that goodness, they'll desire to have. People want to be good. People want nice things. People like lovely things. But there's this horrible twist on how you can get them. The whole of the demonic realm is held together by fear. It wants to hold you captive to fear. And it will try and get Christians to be frightened of the demonic, frightened of the dark. But you've got the light switch in your hand. You've only got to flick the light switch on, there's no darkness. And that flicking of the light switch on is the authority of the Word of God in your mouth. It's a sword. It's supposed to be used for destroying, not hiding under, not retreating. God is our rear guard. Don't have to worry what's behind you. You use the Word of God to go forward. It's a sword. And we can do this through Romans 5.5. 5. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. This person is so unloving. Hey, I've got the Holy Spirit. I've got the love of God in me. I need to tap into that. Before I do, I'm just going to bind that spirit in Jesus' name. That's a lying spirit. Boom. I've now neutralized things in the spiritual realm. Now I can show love to that person. Alleluia. How did, what did Jesus' ministry do? Have a listen to this, Acts 10.38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. That word power is excusia. And excusia means authoritative power. So those people are subject to the authoritative power of the devil. Jesus came along and healed and restored all those that were under the power of the devil. What's our mission? Exactly the same. To restore, to show the love of God, to use our authority, stand up for what is right, what is truthful, pray for those in authority, bind those spirits of wickedness in the high places, and stop those wickednesses going together sevenfold over, break them down to nothing, and start declaring God's love and promises, and then follow it up in the physical realm, not by resisting and fighting it, but with the love of God. And who can resist? And that's how we'll take the kingdom back, inch by inch by inch. When I say territory back, we've already won the kingdom. We're just not using our authority. So God has anointed you because you have the Spirit of God in you. You are anointed. Your words are anointed. So just be careful what you start speaking out. Too many people are loose with their tongue. Talk about others. Let's say roast the pastors over Sunday lunch. Don't do it. I'm roasted enough. I'm well done. I'm cooked. But be careful what you speak. And try and just think, yeah, I'm going to start speaking life over people. I'm going to start speaking cancer, bow your knee over the Princess of Wales, over Kate Middleton. That cancer is going to have to bend under the name and authority of Jesus Christ. I speak healing. I speak life into her body. And I camp the angels around her for her protection. That's what we should be praying and, and thanking God for them. Thank you for their integrity, Lord, that you withhold them that you keep any wickedness away from them. Thank you for their loving marriage, that it will blossom. Pray for those in, around you, your neighbours, the people in your workforce. Change that situation by becoming a warrior 
that you're called to be, a person of authority, a person of integrity, a person who is righteous because they know their position in the kingdom. And God has given and delegated that authority to you and me to start taking back the ground. He's, not, he's done all he's going to do. It's up to us now. When there's accidents, don't put flowers. Go there and pray and bind the demonic spirits that cause that because that's what caused it in the first place. We kind of, we kind of like let go of the spiritual realm and try and get into the emotional realm and the physical realm so much, but we've got to stay in the spiritual realm. Okay, bless you all. We're going to go back into worship.